I'm going over the assembly of the thigh and shank for our humanoid lower leg and the knee and ankle belt drives. Here we have our 3D printed foot with the ankle belts and driven pulley pre-assembled, the shank which consists of two symmetrical components and these enclose the lower ankle belt drive, the medial thigh component with the hip flexion actuator mounted up top, and the lateral thigh which has the knee and ankle flexion actuators mounted and the driving pulleys attached to the actuators via spacers. I've left the knee driven pulley free to rotate around one screw so that we'll have enough slack to assemble the belt. We'll start with the shank and foot assembly. To give us enough slack in the belt to assemble we're using three eccentric idlers which are mounted on this bolt. These will allow us to take out the slack by rotating the idler and pushing these bearings into the belt. Just by rotating that idler half a turn, we'll be able to take out enough slack in three places along the belt. So I'm starting by loading the three idlers onto their mounting bolts on one half of the shank structure here. and these bolts are also holding the two halves of the shank together. Before we assemble the lower ankle drive, we'll place the knee and upper ankle drive belts at the knee joint. So the knee belt goes on first, wrapping around this driven pulley that's fixed to the shank. Next, we can wrap the lower ankle belt around this center pulley at the knee joint and insert the foot at the ankle joint. And the extra slack lets us route the belt around the tensioning pulleys here. And we're gonna leave those loose at this step. So there's still plenty of slack. We have a third eccentric that gets mounted up at the top in the same way. And next, we can place the upper ankle belts over this top pulley at the knee joint and now attach the second half of the shank. I'm making sure to first align the knee and ankle joints, and then I'll be able to start tightening the bolts. And for now, I'm just going to turn the bolts until they're seated without torquing them. So this is just enough to join the two halves, but we don't want to tension the belts at this step. So right up until these are about hand tight. So I'm leaving slack in the belt at this point, which allows it to get centered on the pulleys, and we can verify there's no rubbing anywhere. And the two pulleys at the knee joint here are mounted via some bolts to one another. So that'll allow the actuator to drive the ankle independent of the knee with this two belt system. And the knee pulley, meanwhile, is bolted directly to the shank. So as the knee actuator turns, that'll drive the whole shank around the knee joint.
And when we want to tension the belts at the next step, we'll just turn these eccentric idlers by a half turn, and that pushes these bearings into the belt, and we'll take out the slack. So we're ready to join the thigh and shank now. I've left the knee driver pulley free to spin around the bolt that's closest to the knee so that there's enough slack to first wrap the belt around it. So as with the shank, I'll first route the belt around its idler pulleys. And now we can insert the remaining three bolts to attach the driver pulley to the knee actuator. And I can use a four millimeter driver to locate the hole and keep things aligned. And then a 3.5 to drive the M4 bolts in. Now we'll do the same process for the ankle driver pulley. So first I'll take out the top three bolts here, which will allow it to rotate down towards the knee joint. So now with this extra slack, we can wrap the upper ankle belts around the driver pulley and now mount it using the remaining three bolts like we just did for the knee driver. So now both the knee and ankle belt drives are assembled. The ankle drive consists first of this upper drive from the actuator to the knee, and the secondary drive is contained within the shank from the knee to the ankle joint. Of course, this has a lot of slack still, and the knee drive belt runs from the actuator to the knee-driven pulley, which we've fixed to the shank, so the actuator will rotate that whole lower leg. For the knee drive, we have two additional fixed idlers uh, to add on right here at the top. This will reduce some of the amount of slack that we need to take out with the eccentric idlers at the bottom. So after I've added those, um, like with the shank, we can rotate these eccentric idlers a half turn. 
and this pushes the bearing in towards the belt to tension it and then tightening this M4 bolt back to keep the eccentric from rotating. So for the upper ankle belt, it'll be using the same system, but since it's such a short belt, so we can accomplish that just by tensioning one side, but it's going to be the exact same idler system. Uh, but when we add this top half, we'll need to pre-tension one side of the belt so that the other has enough slack to wrap around that idler pulley.